Good afternoon and welcome to House Judiciary Committee. We are continuing our discussion on uh, the Bureau or Division of Racial Statistics. And uh, we are joined by Kristen McClure. And um, welcome, very glad to, to have you here. I think you play a very important role to this process and, and uh, look forward to your testimony, uh, really guiding us through this and helping us understand how everything connects and works together. And so really, really appreciate you being um, with us. And sorry, I need to step out to make a phone call, but, um, but I'll be back as, as soon as I can. So. Great, well, thank you so much for having me today. Uh, for the record, Kristen McClure, Chief Data Officer with ADS. And for today, I'd like to hit on three key points. One, uh, regarding some minor modifications or recommendations to the bill. The second, to talk about de-identified and identified data and how that relates to CGIS data. And then the third, which will be a good segue, third to cover technology costs. Does that sound good to everyone? Excellent, yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, great. So for the minor adjustments, modifications, uh, there are two of them. The first one we recommend is on page four. Number six, this is under duties of the division where it lists um, making technology recommendations. And we feel like it's more appropriate for this to be a duty of ADS versus the division as ADS is responsible for technology for the state. Could you point me to where that was again? I'm sorry. But... Yeah, it's page four, number six, starting with uh, line item eight. Okay. And, and again, so your recommendation is for that uh, for that duty to be owned by ADS, where it references making technology recommendations. This five forty six. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry, we're that's a moment to, to okay. So right, so so right now mm -hmm. um, the duty is within the this new division, and you're saying Correct. pull that out. Correct. Mm -hmm. So Pull that out, delete. put right. that under ADS, or you could delete that, correct? Because that, that is an ADS responsibility. Okay, great. The next one is on page five under data governance, number three. And this, my feedback is consistent with what you heard from the state archivist. The record retention is most appropriate or more appropriate to be of a SARA responsibility versus an ADS responsibility. And for the data collection and data governance, we would recognize this as a division responsibility versus an ADS. So we would, much like we interact with the other businesses, we consult on that item, but we recognize ownership that the business would have for data collection and data governance. The other items associated with that, which are uh, security and storage and management, uh, I'd leave as ADS, that's totally appropriate. Security, storage, and where's... This is on line 14 and 15, I believe. Can, can I ask uh, just a, a real quickly, is that on, I'm looking for data collection, it's digital services. Oh, I see, on the collection and retention. So collection mm -hmm. is, the division, Correct. retention is an archivist, mm -hmm. data governance is presumably the division, mm -hmm. and, and data security is also the division, or did you say that's ADS? That would be ADS and storage would be ADS. And how about management? Oh, I yeah, see. I think that's appropriate to leave as ADS too. <clears throat> Thank you. So that covers the modification recommendations we have on that. The next item I wanted to talk through is about de-identified and identified data. So as I read through the bill, it wasn't clear to me uh, the intent of, do we want the division to receive de-identified data or identified data? And identified data includes a person's first name, last name, and date of birth. De-identified data does not include any of those three items. And when I heard some of the other witnesses 
um, provide testimony. Some had assumed it would be identified data from the sound of it, and some had assumed it would be identified data. So it would probably be good to clarify which data set, which type of data you want to receive, want the division to receive. So yeah, I have a question about that. Um, so, so you're not necessarily taking a pre preference one way or another. It's just make it clear. Is what Correct. We need to do. Yep. Is that a matter of clarifying in the, the bill itself or just under, I mean, yeah, I could forget that question. Yeah, I, I, can, I can understand. Yeah. You know, no, I, I, I'll, I'll, take over. I'll, I'll be right back, but I'll take over in a second. I'm all set. Tom, um, I think the the difference, at least, hi, Kristen, how are you? Hi, Coach, good, thank you. Um, I think the difference is in the particular study that's being done. Um, a lot of the data doesn't have to be, uh, let's say, age identified, name identified. Whereas if we were talking about school settings, we would almost need to be able to identify age. So was it from pre-K to 12, for example? You know, if we were looking at uh, the effects of uh, uh, policing or police supports within a school setting, you know, like the, the big discussion now is with SROs. So, so how would you disaggregate that data um, unless you had age identifiable? I, I would recommend including age anyway in any data, yeah. in all the data sets. Yeah. Um, the option the committee has is do you want to include specific date of birth for a person? See, that I don't think is as is as necessary. And I think uh, one of the other things that I think uh, uh, Martin was alluding to is, is that the advisory panel uh, that would be working uh, with the division would be making recommendations. And presently, those recommendations are going to be uh, rule set. You know, so they'd go through the rulemaking process. Um, but I think in order for us to get started, a lot of the initial data, uh, I would agree with you, um, having age would cover 98% of the information that we need, if not more. You see me, Tom? I just want to raise my hand. I know it's hard for you to see from inside <clears throat> your, uh, your uh, square. One of those foam hands. I, I do. I do have. Hands. I do have my participant list up. Um, so anybody who is uh, uh, zooming, I guess, uh, I would be able to see their hand. But anyway, uh, yeah. Go ahead, Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I think I'm going to start doing is zooming in and just keeping everything muted and off, so I can raise my hand. On <laughs> I think I've just decided that that's what we're doing going forward. Anyway, I apologize. So. This probably isn't, I'm going to try to work this as into a question for Kristen as opposed to a statement, but we'll see how that goes. I, I think it's probably critical that it's actually identified data because the idea is we're getting data from multiple agencies that we in fact may want to be matching up a particular individual's journey through the criminal justice system. So that may in fact require uh, having the birth date and all that uh, additional information. We just, I agree we need to make that clear. And I agree when we talk to the archivist, we also need to make clear as far as how the Public Records Act applies to that because it should apply if, if some of that data comes through that uh, is, is exempted from uh, being released, that should, should continue to be the case. Um, I guess I didn't have a question in there. I apologize, Kristen, but uh, unless you wanted to comment on that thought. No, if the intent is to link across the data sets, like you mentioned, then you would want to receive identified data to enable that. Right, we'll need to make that clear. I appreciate yeah. that, thank you. Th I do want to mention, oh, go on coach. No, no, I was saying thank you. 
I do want to mention there are some additional responsibilities the division will have if they receive identified data, because it'll mean that they're responsible for CGIS data, which is now a specific compliance category, a federal compliance category. Can you say what that is? I'm sorry. What it's kind of data? CGIS data, C J I S. It stands for criminal justice information. And there are a few key elements that's probably worth sharing here about CGIS data. So much like uh, the federal government also has a compliance category for FTI tax data and has certain regulations and security measures specified for that, they have the same for CGIS data. So there's certain security measures that would need to be put in place for the technology wherever the data touches. So how it's received, where it's stored, how it's used, that whole environment needs to be CGIS compliant. So additional security measures and um, a firewall and configuration, specific audit and logging, but ADS would take care of that and enable the environment to be CGIS compliant. So I wanted to mention that because it'll be reflected in the technology cost too. Okay, thank there, you. Oh, there are three other items that I think may be useful for the committee to know about CGIS data. <clears throat> and it's really on the division responsibility, but probably good to be aware of. One is around access control, and this is a shared responsibility that ADS and the division would have. Essentially, who is granted access to the data? And CGIS says, basically, it's a need to know. Only people are granted access to the identified data that need to know to work on it. And it's called least privilege. So people are assigned the very least privilege necessary to execute their job function. The other item that I think is probably worth mentioning is, and C just references it as information exchange agreements. In the state, we have Bulletin 3.5, which says we need data sharing agreements between any external entity in the government, as well as across branches. C just takes it one step further and says any entity sharing data needs to have a data sharing agreement in place. And then the last item is Can just really for, uh, yeah. You, no, go that, ahead, Mark. Um, so <laughs> in the bill itself, uh, is, is there language we need to add or is, do you consider that to be part of uh, ADS's purview that we're going to try to make clear with the security issues, or, or is there something that we need to add in your view? Um, I would defer to the attorneys on it, maybe a line item of need to abide by federal and state laws. Right. And it would be, could be inclusive there. I, I think in order, to, uh, uh, Martin, if as we're talking to ledge counsel, uh, we refer to CGIS compliance because then you know people have to search for that and understand it if we just say federal compliance it's like oh yeah just another federal thing no but when you talk about sieges sieges is pretty intentional and so uh i think that would clarify for internal and external uh, uh viewers or requesters of any right. way you know, if that makes sense. So I guess the question though for uh, Ms. Kluwer is, uh, is there, are we leaving something out if we just say CGIS or is that really the, the main focus here? I know we have Public Records Act, we're gonna mm -hmm. be dealing with that uh, separately, but um, is there- I don't think we're team? leaving anything out if we just call out the CGIS yeah. requirements. Okay, thank you, thank you. It's, it I think coach is going to say something. Well, I, 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 I was going into a strange place, Martin. You know, that, that, that strange place. All right, okay. I guess not. Anything else on that before we talk about the technology cost? I don't think so. I think that was helpful. Okay. <clears throat> 
So I'll focus on the identified data technology cost and then just kind of note the difference in it where it would be for de-identified data. So again, these are kind of rough assumptions with a lot of, um, I assumed information about the data and the size of the data, the number of different data sets that would be sent just so we could have a ballpark estimate to talk through. So the bottom line ADS cost, which includes both the technology cost and resource cost, ranges from about 450, 450K to 550K. And the 450K is the de-identified ballpark cost. The 550K is the identified data ballpark cost. Do you want me to break it down by technology and resource and um, like the division of ADS kind of standard charges? Uh, actually, I need something probably higher level. First. Okay, sure. And Tom, uh, I didn't know if you saw my hand, Tom. Yeah, yeah, uh, no, go. Martin, just jump right in. Not a big deal. Okay. Um, so when you're talking about identif identified and de-identified, is this cost specific? What's this cost specific? Well, I guess I'm all of a sudden said specific when I said I wanted to hear general. I mean, is it for the various agencies within the administration and cost associated with the data coming from there? I assume it doesn't include the court or, or is this something different? Well, if you could describe at kind of a higher level and then into the specifics. Sure. There, these would be costs incurred to support the data that the division would be receiving and the analytics that the division would need. The difference in the cost for the de-identified and identified data, one is around that CGIS compliant environment for the technology, and that's about 40,000. That's a one-time setup cost. So you would incur that really in the first year to set up your compliant environment. And then going forward, you wouldn't have that $40,000 cost. The other component is around resources. And with, with identified data, as you mentioned before, it has that matching component. So that drives additional workload on uh, the DBA resource. So we're estimating about three quarters of a DBA resource for identified data to do that matching. The difference for that DBA cost, it would drop to about a half a resource, a half FTE for the de-identified data. So, so is so that DBA, DBA? I'm sorry. What was oh, sorry. Answer? Database administrator. Oh, okay. And DBA. they would be receiving the data that the different entities send the division. They would get that data, load it into a database and then perform that matching for the division. So if I could ask, a, this, is a, this is a higher level question. Mm -hmm. and, and this is great that you're getting into this. this is exactly, I'm delighted that we are getting into the, these details. Um, so the way, the way that, I mean, this document does not spell out precisely <clears throat> the staffing. Uh, I mean, but I will tell you what it was based on, just, just so you know, and, and it was just really as a placeholder. Uh, and that was, uh, we calculated, and this was based on a bill last year, H317, which is kind of the precursor to this bill. And it was based on having a, a deputy director, uh, two uh, IT analysts, essentially, and one administrator for this division. Um, and... I guess what I'm, I'm wondering is whether that's appropriate or, or whether it's a, not as many people in the division because we're relying on a lot of work on ADS, if that's the vision. And I'm happy to work with however the administration wants to work on this, and I'm just trying to understand that for, for our ask. So if I'm following correctly, four head count for the division? Right, right. Yes. Yeah, no, that yeah. seems... I have no idea if that's the right number. I mean, I just want to, we put that in there as a placeholder yeah. because we're not the experts yeah, on Yeah, she's got it. But but uh, she was just getting ready to tell us how that, <laughs> okay. equate, how, how that equated. 
All right. Yeah, well, reading through the bill, that seems like that was my gut feel. I, I estimated in this about five headcount for the division. This would be additional headcount from ADS to support that, to support okay. the, the data the division receives. Okay, great. Thank you very much. So, as I mentioned, we have that database administer, administrator re resource. We also, in this estimate, included a project manager because we assumed this is, while this isn't a very tech heavy item, it is very resource intensive on the division and the business areas sending the data. So we had assumed one project manager for at least a year, potentially two may be needed as part of this cost estimate. So, so I guess Mark, Martin, you know, in order to help not only our committee, but other uh, of our colleagues who might not see the back end of ADS, this has offered a lot of clarity, actually. Yes. You know, and I think that um, it could be because we want to ensure that everybody understands what this is all about we might need to go into a little more detail in our uh, noting information in our bill. You know, I'd rather have a little more volume, especially if people are gonna understand that ADS's supports are this, in the background, over and above what the division is actually doing with their manpower or people power, so to speak. Does that so, make sense? Yeah, I, I think that uh, what, what we can ponder is a little more. I, what I envisioned and was gonna ask uh, Ms. McClure for, uh, if we can get this information in, in writing as well, just so, cause yeah. I'm trying to keep it up and to understand what is a one-time cost versus what the estimate might be for down the road, maybe that's hard to do, but I mean, the estimate for down the road is not obviously as critical because we're not gonna ask the appropriations for that. But I would think that would go all into a, a joint fiscal office report. And that's as much for appropriations to parse through as us. So I don't know if I wanna be overly prescriptive in the bill as opposed to here's the bottom line number and the backup support is the JFO uh, report. Isn't that how that would run? Well, it, we could do it either way. I, I, I think that it would be um, if, if, if Kristen felt being that you've been doing this for, you know, for, for us across, you know, across other agencies, um, <laughs> If, if there's a standard protocol, you know, for dissemination of the information um, so that the uh, folks on the policy side uh, can implement, um, however you feel, you know, is best. I think Martin's point is well taken that, uh, because they just did a fiscal note on another, on the per diem bill actually. Um, and we just got that back today. Uh, and, it was very informative. Um, so I think when JFO uh, does their piece, um, that analysis uh, is critical for a lot of our members, you know, in, in the body. So, um, so Ms. McClure, did, did you have more as far as, I, I think I may have jumped in there before you uh, had finished, and I apologize, but. Oh, that, that covered the, the cost discussion. Okay, all right, thank you. And I, I can um, send you that in a document as well. Great, great. That, that would be very helpful. I wonder uh, if I could ask kind of your opinion from that when you saw this, you estimated uh, five FTEs necessary. Can you just explain that a little bit more? Because again, that four, it wasn't made up, it was based on some other things, but but. Uh, I would certainly like to understand where, where you came mm -hmm. up with the, the five. That's very helpful. Yeah, I was estimating like you were a lead for the division. Um, 
and two data stewards. Again, the majority, the majority of the work, and it is a su substantial piece of work, will be on the division and potentially the area sending the data. Um, so it's going to be intensive from a process perspective for the division. So mm -hmm. I was ballparking two data stewards and like, two data analysts to do the analysis work. So did, did you have a chance uh, to read the, the RDAP report on this from November? I'm just curious if you... Not the one from November, from the previous year. Because uh, it was just, they didn't really specify the number of people, but they specified um, in their recommendations, they came up, well, here's, here's what... FTE should cover. Here's kind of like the responsibilities they set out. Um, I guess if I could ask you if you'd have a chance to perhaps review that and get back to us if anything jumps out at you, because we you probably will we'll be having you back in again, almost certainly not here. It's, it's going to travel through the government operations committee and then to appropriations and almost certainly uh, we'd be reaching out to you uh, among a number of other witnesses uh, and, and kind of having had a chance to look at what they suggested uh, may, may be helpful. Uh, sure. So. Okay. Yeah. And, and it might be uh, just in terms of having done a little bit of this before, uh, I think that sometimes it'll be a question of terminolo terminology. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, where uh, we might say data analyst and mm -hmm. someone else will say data steward, mm -hmm. you know? And I so- Exactly right. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, so once we get, you know, clear on our language, you know, that'll hopefully help people as well. So just, just, just a point. And as a question. <laughs> so uh, good afternoon. So just to be clear, we're talking about four additional people to handle this? No? Not from the ADS perspective. How many are we talking from ADS? For the identified data, 1 p.m. we would recommend, and three quarters of an FTE for a database administrator. Okay, and what about, is there enough... Um, I don't have the proper word. I want to say computers, equipment, stuff like that. Is ADS equipped to handle this extra load? Yeah, I think you're asking the the load of the work, of the data coming in and the hosting of it. Right. And in that case, that's where we factor in the one or the three quarters of a DBI and the hosting costs are also factored into this. The PM that we have factored into this that I mentioned. Um, we have it factored in at a rate for a contractor because to your point, can ADS handle this load? We have a number of projects that are ongoing this year into next year, and we're hitting the limit of the number of PMs we have at the state level. So it factors in the contract rate for the PM. And that was my next um, question of clarification is you're already understaffed over there already, correct? So you're having a, a difficult time with workforce just like everybody else? I, I assume that's a, a fair statement. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> just for clarification, I'm a host of financial culture for Martin or Kristen. So two, two questions, exactly how many employees are we discussing here with ADS, without ADS, and is this, is this proposal to bring on more state employees or are these all contracted positions? Well, I, I can start answering. Uh, the division uh, would certainly be state contractors and presumably the three quarter FTE, I would assume, and, and, and Ms. McClure can answer that part of it. Um, but I did have another question uh, actually related to this uh, when you address this. Well, actually, go ahead and I'll, I'll ask the question after. I was basically, I just want to know the totality of the Yeah, yeah well, here, here's it's the question. Confusion between division and, and what ADS is, is going to be doing. And yeah, yeah, and, we're and that's part of what it was great testimony that to help us clarify who does what. 
the question, I guess, if Ms. McCool could, could answer this is, the estimated five FTEs that we have for the division, uh, in this kind of project, would you, would you understand that that's not for the life of the project? It's a lot, I would assume there's a lot of upfront work to get these systems talking to each other. So this may be a two or three year, or what, what would be your estimate Yep, before that, we, can, we can lower the number of people that we have in that division. That's exactly right. It would be a bubble of upfront work. Realistically, probably for two years for the division. Again, it's a pretty work intensive project for them. So I would see a bubble of upfront work, which is where, again, I was ballparking five head count. And I would see that kind of trail off when it reaches steady state to maybe two or three. And, well, and if, if, if I may, Bob, uh, to Bob's question, when we do our JFO um, analysis, they will disaggregate the behind the scenes piece from ADS and the front end piece of the Bureau. So we will be able to see clearly um, what Ms. McClure has shared with us from ADS as far as their labor need and the recommended need for the new division. So we will have a very clear uh, appraisal of that um, at that point in time. So will the committee see that or just? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, that's, a, you, you know, that's, that's, you know, that's the whole idea behind the fisc fiscal note. When, when somebody makes that request, the whole idea is, is so that it's visible, you know, so that we can all make good decisions. You know, um, I testified in uh, government operations yesterday about per diems and one of our colleagues asked for a, if we had a fiscal note. Well, they had a fiscal note this afternoon. So, you know, it's, it's something that we all need in order to make qualitative decisions. So, but Kristen, just, thank you. Just, just to be clear here, this starting point with this money and stuff like this, I, I don't think anybody should be under an illusion that the price is going to drop down as this gets easier because it's not. I mean, the cost of doing business, the salaries and all right, this other right. stuff is going to go up every year. So yeah. Yeah, just to add on to what Bob was, I think, looking for, I don't want to speak for Bob, but... Well, those are cost of living, you know. You know, we had a 3.6% increase, you know, in our 438 employees in another organization I'm working with. So I fully understand what you're referring to, you know. So there isn't any, like, drop-off, even though the efficiency and effectiveness changes as we go. So, you know, it is what it that. is. Yeah. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Not the first rodeo, so to speak. <laughs> Great. Well, I realize I stepped out of the room, but it sounds like this is very helpful testimony. And thank you. I'm not. I'm not seeing any other hands right now. Right. So we do have Michelle, who's available for to make up what we didn't do this morning. So anything else before we? No, I think we're good. And I uh, appreciate uh, whatever you can send me, so I can get that. Uh, joint fiscal office starting to work on that, Ms. McCoy. I really appreciate your testimony. Thank Great. you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Christy. Thanks.